Church of Christ, a blessed Palm Sunday to you. A couple of announcements before our worship begins. I wanted to remind you of our Lenten food and personal hygiene item drive that's going on through the season of Lent. So that carries us right up to next Sunday, Easter Sunday. And uh, please bring your donations by church or you can also contribute money to that. And we're supporting Baby Blue Pantry, brightly colored envelopes for your gift for those who are in the sanctuary this morning. They're in the back of the pew. Uh, and those of you at home, we would welcome your gift. Just put in your memo line of your check, BBP, and send it to our church financial secretary. Also, we haven't heard much this year about this, but uh, in March, one of the Sundays was kind of a suggested Sunday for gifts to one great hour of sharing, which as you may be aware, is a global offering that is uh, invited and an offering appeal is made annually by multiple denominations. So this is within the United Church of Christ, but also other churches as well. And you're, if you would like to make a gift to one great hour of sharing, same thing goes uh, as for your baby blue pantry gift. When you write a check, just indicate in the memo line where you would like your gift to go. We did receive a, a thank you note, I guess we could call it, from the National United Church of Christ at the very beginning of this month, thanking us for being one of the top giving churches to One Great Hour of Sharing in 2019. Last year, of course, was uh, a kind of an out of the ordinary occasion, but for our for our giving to One Great Hour of Sharing two years ago, Ivy Chapel United Church of Christ was an outstanding congregation. And in prayer this morning, I'll be naming some folks, uh, including, I don't have that piece of paper in front of me. Is her name Mayfield? First name? Thank you. Jen Mayfield, friend of Sue Wilson, who is pregnant and learned just recently that she has breast cancer. So she's going through chemotherapy, which is a uh, promise to her that it's safe during her pregnancy, but she's, she's doing chemo while pregnant. So we'll be remembering Jen and her husband and loved ones. Uh, also, Lifting up in prayer, Earl Washburn, uh, Dennis Jaskowiak, Cindy Jaskowiak, and one other person, their name is escaping me, but when you hear it, you'll probably it'll be a recognizable one for you. So just so you know, those people will be, oh, I know what it was that I had on my, uh, on my list for prayer is to remember all of those who were killed, injured, uh, loved ones of those who were killed and injured and anyone traumatized by the shooting in Boulder, Colorado this past Monday. Tragic things and we want to reach out to God's children going through an ordeal like that. Remember we'll have Zoom coffee hour after worship today and uh, please try to put your fingers on a uh, order for worship and share in our responsive and unison portions of worship today. Once again, welcome to Ivy Chapel and let's rejoice and prepare ourselves to worship God on this beautiful Palm Sunday morning.
to stand in the sanctuary and share in our responsive call to worship today. Come to worship. Come join in this chorus of hosannas. Come to let your tongue shout God's praises. Come to find your voice. Come to hear the response. Come to open your ears. Come to listen. Come to be healed by the silence. Come to stand together. Come to experience what words cannot express. Come to find God. Please be seated. Let us join together in our unison prayer of invocation. Let us pray. God of exceptional moments, this morning we recall the electric celebration of people enthusiastically welcoming Jesus along the road to Jerusalem. What a moment! We can imagine ourselves swept up in the party atmosphere of that lively parade. We can feel your great power. We want to cut loose ourselves in ways that faithfully offer you praise. Your holy love reaches out and blesses everyone. Come close now. Ride down King's Highway here in our fair city, Jesus. Enter Metro St. Louis this day. Hosanna. Come on, Jesus. We choose you to be the Grand Marshal 
of our next big parade. Save us, we beg you. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Many of them would come to Jerusalem and gather to celebrate the Jewish holiday with their family and relatives. And if you um, are aware, yesterday was Passover today. Yes, last started last evening. And many years, if not most, um, the, the eight days of Passover and Holy Week are sometimes are very close in their um, in the calendar. Not every year. So I want to ask everyone today, everyone here in the sanctuary, all you YouTubers, all the youth, to close your eyes and imagine yourself on that road that leads to Jerusalem. And you're there waiting to see and greet Jesus. Try to feel the excitement of the people around you. If it's hard to imagine yourself back in Jesus' time, maybe it might be easier to think about going to a parade in the anticipation of seeing people honored, just like the Grand Marshal that we talked about going down King's Highway. Now, when, when they were, I'm reading uh, the passage out of Mark, verses, uh, chapter 11, verses 1 through 1 through 11, um, 10, actually. So when they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, at the mount, at the, near the Mount of Olives, he sent, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, go to the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find there tied a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it, and bring it back with you. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and they found that colt tied to a door outside in the street. Some of the, um, as they were untying it, some of those bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying that colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. When they brought the colt to Jesus, the disciples threw their cloaks on it, and Jesus sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Were you able to imagine the excitement and the joy of the people that experienced Jesus' presence that day? And although it's not specifically said in this, in this passage, Jesus actually rode in on, a, on a, the colt of a donkey, not a horse. A donkey was um, thought to be, based on a traditional amount, for kings and rulers in the ancient Near East in Jesus' area. Horses were more frequently associated with war, and donkeys were, might have been seen as an image of peaceful humility, more like the type of kingdom that Jesus would like to see. Now, people also put the cloaks on the road. And spreading cloaks on the roads was an act of honor and respect to Jesus. Now, just think about it. If you were taking your item of outer clothing, and you probably didn't have too many, and you spread it on the road, it might have gotten dirty. It might have gotten torn. But you were willing to lay it on the road to honor Jesus. Now, Hosanna. Why do we say Hosanna? Where did that come from? Well, that started as a prayer in the Old Testament times. And it meant, save now, pray. It was a prayer of salvation. But by the New Testament times, or by Jesus' times, it had become an expression of praise. Now, not every gospel includes the word, specific word, Hosanna, in describing Jesus' entry to Jerusalem. But they all include words of praise for Jesus. So here we are. It's Palm Sunday, the start of Holy Week. We're getting closer to the end of the road at Easter. Palm Sunday is just one of the Holy Week events that we will experience. There is still so much more that we'll, we will experience. Let's remember the, all those times as we go through this week. So let us pray. Holy Redeemer, please be with us today and guide us this week as we continue to experience the road to your day that joyous day of your resurrection that is Easter. Amen. First reading today is from Psalm 118. <clears throat> oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. I think that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and God has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, and I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. For God's steadfast love endures forever.
Hear the word of God from the gospel for today. Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. When they were nearing Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, Jesus sent off two of the disciples with instructions. Go to the village across from you. As soon as you enter, you'll find a colt tethered, one that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone asks what are you doing, say the master needs him and will return him. They went and found a colt tied to the door at the street corner, and they untied the colt. Some of the people standing there said, What are you doing untying that colt? The disciples replied exactly as Jesus had instructed them. And the people let them do it. The disciples brought the colt to Jesus, spread their coats on it, and Jesus mounted. The people gave Jesus a wonderful welcome, some throwing their coats on the road, others spreading out rushes they had cut in the fields. Running ahead and following after, they were all calling out, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in God's name. Bless, blessed the kingdom, blessed the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered Jerusalem. Then he entered the temple. He looked around, taking it all in. But by now, it was late. So Jesus went back out to Bethany with the twelve. God close by. For me, the gospel on Palm Sunday is a valuable reminder that God is close by. As Jesus of Nazareth is strolling toward Jerusalem, people get wind of it. And they get and they're excited, telling each other, Jesus is close by. People turn out to see him. Here's Jesus. God close by. Part of God's calling for us as disciples is to join in the parade this day because the flash mob on the road to Jerusalem is a beautiful moment in Jesus' ministry. It's a divine street party for everybody to enjoy. So if you're here in the sanctuary, keep your palm handy. To you who are worshiping at home, improvise. Find something supple that can serve as your palm leaf this morning. I mean, it could be something as as simple as a piece of paper or an envelope. Just something to wave like that. How about uh, how about a guest towel? You get a little one of these. It's not quite as good, I don't think, as the because it's the gentle action. You might have an old rally towel from the cardinal. Get that at home. Because worship is about taking part. And on Palm Sunday, you, you might have some tissue paper. Oh, good Lord, I've got so many things up here. How about a placemat? Okay, something that you can wave if, you don't, if you're not here in the sanctuary today, but you can have something to join in when we get to that point. <clears throat> and... Here's the thing. I think you're familiar with this because we've done this in the past. When you hear me say, this goes for you at home and everybody here, I say, blessed is the one, get ready, get that palm, or whatever you have, tissue paper ready. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. Then you wave your palm. I mean, you can go in any way you want and shout out, sing out, I guess I'd like to say, Hosanna! Okay? All right, we got it. Now put those... Put it down for a second. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. Hosanna. All right. You got it. Yeah, we've done this. It's a kind of an annual tradition, I think, in our congregation. Now, remember, this will come up again. So 
shouldn't be too hard for those of you who are in the pews, but if you're at home, stay by your prop. Beloved, this morning you and I are in the rarefied air of the small, select number of instances in our New Testament when Jesus uses an Aramaic word. That Aramaic, as you will recall, was the mother tongue spoken by Jesus, the, the everyday language, even though the New Testament is written in Greek. Um, Aramaic was the language of Palestine and the language that Jesus spoke. But we don't have many instances in the New Testament where Aramaic words actually appear. So we got a little crash course in this during our children's message today. But here's the review. Hosanna, Palm Sunday's trademark word. It's about this translation thing, right? It's the Aramaic transliteration of Hebrew. Hoshiana. And Hoshiana means save us. We beg you, save us. Approaching Jerusalem, the gospel for this high holy day is spectacular news. Mark 11 brings word Jesus is approaching. On many occasions, our master has taught us, saying, my hour has not yet come. So being a Jesus follower demands a lot of patience. Because this is something... Jesus repeats quite a few times, my hour has not yet come. Now, Jesus is approaching the holy city, step by step. The hour, whatever that is, disciples and you and me are always curious about what does that mean? Step by step, the hour is coming closer. There's electricity in the air. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. Hosanna! When we pause and take a deep breath, we appreciate the moment. We sense we're a part of something historic. <clears throat> Over the top. This is the flavor of Christ's entry into Jerusalem. In spite of well-meaning advice Jesus was receiving, warning him there are people in Jerusalem who would like to see you dead, cautioning him not to go to the city for your own safety, Jesus. Don't go there. It's dangerous. And, friends, don't you and I in St. Louis County rehearse our own version of this, telling ourselves the city is not safe. It's better not to go. Stay away from the city. So we can connect with that message. And yet, Jesus goes. Without fearing for his own safety, Jesus visibly, publicly parades into Jerusalem. And he does this in a way that is peculiar, peculiarly, <laughs> peculiarly over the top in a manner that only the Son of God could pull off. Jesus makes his grand entrance, not mounted on some impressive majestic steed, not riding high on a towering war horse. Instead, Jesus enters riding a donkey, symbolizing humility and peace. Yes, this is the way the Prince of Peace always comes humbly. Blessed is the one who comes in God's name. Hosanna. Hosanna to the King of Kings. The Prince of Peace. The King of Kings. One of God's prophets in the Old Testament, Zechariah, in chapter 9, verse 9, proclaims this. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious, humble and riding on a donkey. God's word 
centuries before Jesus of Nazareth was born. And then consider this. I always loved this. We'd get a little porcelain donkey on and mixed in with our things up on the altar this morning. Consider this. Jesus does, as his own mother did on her way to Bethlehem. Mary rode on a donkey. Jesus rides on a donkey. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. Hosanna. Jesus of Nazareth is revealing to it today, forever will be revealing what he began revealing in first century Palestine. Jesus of Nazareth is revealing the essence of life is not earthly trophies, not material things, not good looks, not money, not prestige, not success. Jesus of Nazareth is revealing on this Palm Sunday the very message he was revealing on that occasion we're commemorating today. His message is the essence of life is concern for others. Offering others anything and everything God enables us to offer. Life is an offering. Jesus reveals this by living it out. Oh, the things he will do, the sacrifices Jesus will offer during the week ahead. This is why we call it Holy Week. After Jesus was arrested, he was sent to the authorities. First, accusers brought Jesus before the high priest Caiaphas. Next, Caiaphas passed Jesus on to Pontius Pilate. Once Jesus had been taken to the praetorium, as he was standing before Pilate, being interrogated, Jesus was silent. What was going through his mind? Jesus of Nazareth makes a passionate plea. Sometimes not in spoken words. An appeal to you and me, sisters and brothers. Care for each other. Love one another. Never stop giving. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. Hosanna, let us pray. Living God, we rejoice at the memory of this day. We're amazed by the way that you do things as Jesus Christ. God, you did not take the conventional approach. You did not just follow advice, even if it's given to you in a way that is intended to be caring and helpful. More often than not, God, you blaze a new trail. Whether it's strolling along a dusty road up to the holy city of Jerusalem, or reaching out, reaching down to the lowly, to those who have been condemned or ignored or unloved and offering grace and love. You are blessed, Jesus, because you come in God's name. But you also teach us that we can follow in your footsteps, that we can live lives of blessing, caring for others, offering compassion. Never stop giving. 
Fill us with your Holy Spirit this day. Lead us to higher ground and use us as your servants to spill over the same way that your grace spills over as an overflowing cup in our lives. Use us to share love and grace with all. This morning we pray for your people. We ask you to be with all who are hurting physically or mentally or in any way. Some we call to mind, but we did not name out loud this morning. But we pray for these, your children. And we also pray today that your presence will comfort and help and heal as you are able, your people, Cindy Jaskowiak, Dennis Jaskowiak, Jen Mayfield, and Jen's husband and family, Joshua Lockyer, Jill Lockyer, Jude Lockyer, John Lockyer. Earl Washburn, and we pray for the people who were affected and are still feeling the effects of this horrible shooting in Boulder, Colorado, God. You were there as it took place. You are here now. We pray that you will reassure and surround with your love everyone who is affected, injured, killed, or traumatized by this terrible act of violence. As we have learned again today, Jesus, you call us to a still more excellent way the way of hope and peace and love eternal. We pray all this in your holy name, Jesus, and we join our voices together now, praying your words together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
I'm so pleased you were able to be a, a part of this worship. And my prayer for you is a blessed holy week ahead. And now I'll receive God's benediction. Our Savior King does ride on, God close by. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. Hosanna. Amen.